Hi everyone, I am Cornelius of Voice Studio East, and this is the 13th installment of the Singing Demystified video series. We are reaching the end of the register series, having just one more register left to address, pharyngeal voice. Unfortunately, pharyngeal voice is generally the hardest to learn of all the registers in my system, which is why I have left it last in this series. The term pharyngeal voice is a direct translation of an old Italian term, voce faringea, referring to a vocal coordination in which the pharynx is narrowed medially, resulting in a sound with the lightness and agility of falsetto, but which has some of the bite of modal voice and will connect with either one. It is the original mixed voice, and since it can be developed from falsetto, it has also often been referred to as a reinforced falsetto, though this term is now more commonly associated with glam rock. The most reliable way to find it is to start from cry register and turn it into pharyngeal voice. First we need a very bright cry register at f sharp 4 or higher, and then we need to add more pharyngeal twang to it. If you don't know how to add pharyngeal twang, practice making a whining sound or a yowling sound. Then practice adding pharyngeal twang in a more comfortable range first. Once you have it, return to the cry register at F sharp 4 or higher and add the pharyngeal twang. Then simply slide a perfect fifth upwards into falsetto and back down. It might crack on the first few slides, but if your cry register is well coordinated and sufficiently bright, it should connect after a couple of tries. Once it is connected, you will have found pharyngeal voice at the top, with a bit of cry quality thrown in for added stability. After getting used to this new coordination though, you will find that the residual cry quality is not necessary and can be dropped, resulting in this sound. When using this approach to pharyngeal voice, there are two things to look out for. Firstly, it is important that the cry register used is sufficiently bright and fronted to feel weightless. There should not be any appreciable depth to it. In fact, it should be so light that it can be done with a soft, breathy character without much difficulty. Secondly, it is important that the cry register does not feature a restrained quality like in mixed voice. If there is a light restraint, the exercise may still work but will lead to a pharyngealized mix instead of pharyngeal voice proper. If the restraint is too strong, though, the exercise is unlikely to work at all. Another approach is to start from a twanged falsetto and go into yell timbre, like this. This results in a sound that is too splatty or yelpy for most purposes, but which is nevertheless part of pharyngeal voice and can be useful as a starting point. The next step then becomes to attain more versatility when it comes to vowels, and not be stuck with only those that are accommodating of yell timbre. The vowels required for a pharyngeal voice are the same as those required for twanged call register. That is, they need to be at least in whoop timbre or more open than that, and to use second formant third harmonic tuning or something more fronted than that which means that the vowels U and O will need to be directed towards Ö as we ascend in pitch, and the vowel E will need to be directed towards E. But also, as with twanged call register, pharyngeal voice needs a vocal tract shaping featuring a spacious oral cavity and a medially narrowed pharynx. Though the vowels are altered compared to speech vowels, the articulation cannot be lazy or slurred, as that will result in the restrained quality of mixed voice coming in. Also, despite the comparatively low volume, the mouth opening must be quite large. A little tip, when trying to expand your arsenal of vowels in pharyngeal voice, it may be helpful to reintroduce the cry quality in the beginning, just for a bit of added error margin. Pharyngeal voice may seem conspicuously related to twanged call register. 
It may even seem that there is no basis for a categorical distinction and that pharyngeal voice is simply a lower volume version of trained call register. This is true in a sense. Reducing the volume in trained call register, in the high range at any rate, generally does require going towards pharyngeal voice. But the basis for a categorical distinction can be found in the fact that pharyngeal voice has a sufficiently narrow pharynx to erase the distinction between modal and falsetto, whereas a twanged call register is liable to crack at some point when you make it excessively soft. Once you have reinforced your falsetto into a pharyngeal voice, you can practice the sliding exercise as before to reconnect it to your modal voice, whether in the form of call register, chest register or cry register, and then in the opposite direction toward head register. <laughs> Once you have got the hang of pharyngeal voice, you should be able to start from a soft falsetto, swell it into pharyngeal voice, and slide down into, for example, call register, all without a voice crack occurring. You may have noticed that I omitted mixed voice from my list of registers to connect pharyngeal voice with. This is because we will need a different coordination for that, namely the pharyngealized mix I mentioned in my mixed voice episode and promised to go over in this one. The pharyngealized mix can be thought of as a pharyngeal voice with added restraint, allowing it to use the vowels of mixed voice. Conversely, it can also be thought of as a mixed voice with a lot of pharyngeal narrowing. It is effectively a mix between two different approaches to mixy singing, leading to a particularly great variety of possibilities when it comes to light singing and to making transitions between modal and falsetto. And if you are reasonably proficient with both mixed voice and pharyngeal voice, it is not particularly difficult to find pharyngealized mix. The easiest way is to simply slide between mixed voice and pharyngeal voice, as with the other registers, and then hold on to just a bit of the restrained quality, like this. Another way is to find it in a manner analogous to the one we used for finding pharyngeal voice. Start with a cried mix at F sharp 4, make it really bright, add pharyngeal twang, slide back and forth between that and a restrained falsetto until the two connect, and then remove the cry quality once it is no longer needed. Once you've found it, it should be possible to start from a soft falsetto, gradually swell it into a pharyngealized mix, and then slide down to mixed voice, all without a voice crack occurring. Once you have gotten the hang of this transition, as well as the one using pharyngeal voice rather than pharyngealized mix, you can proceed to practice scales endlessly to refine your transitions as much as possible until you sound like a Rossini tenor or something. A word of warning though, pharyngeal voice is quite limited in volume and like how mixed voice is prone to causing squeezing spirals, pharyngeal voice is prone to causing squeaking spirals. A squeaking spiral is like a squeezing spiral, but with a progressively increasing narrowing of the pharynx being the culprit, rather than a progressively increasing stretching and squeezing of the vocal folds. There are two things that contribute to a squeaking spiral, taking pharyngeal voice too high in pitch at too soft a volume, and taking it too low in pitch at too loud a volume. Going up in pitch, pharyngeal voice, as with any register, is dependent on some resonance tuning in order to be efficient. It can get this resonance tuning by opening the mouth, raising the larynx, constricting the epiglottic funnel, and so on, or by further narrowing the pharynx. Trouble is, in pharyngeal voice, the larynx is usually already close to being as high as it will go, and the pharyngeal constrictor muscles are already quite active, making it very tempting to just narrow the pharynx even more as you go up in pitch. Instead, you need to either allow the volume to rise, along with the associated larger mouth opening and more constricted epiglottic funnel, or transition to falsetto or head register, 
Or else, at least make sure to release the pharyngeal narrowing at some point before it gets out of hand. When going down in pitch, pharyngeal voice becomes rather quiet, and pushing the volume will lead to an excessive airflow that is likely to irritate the vocal folds and trigger an instinctive reflex of the pharyngeal muscles, making them narrow the pharynx even further to reduce the airflow, and be reluctant to relax again. To avoid this, the solution is the same as when trying to avoid squeezing spiral from taking mixed voice to low in pitch. We need some other register to land in. Now, if you have come this far, you probably do have a pretty developed chest voice to land in, so it shouldn't be much trouble, and it should go without saying that squeaking spirals, like squeezing spirals, do not have to be scary at all. Just make sure to land in some stronger register when going down in pitch, and if you do find yourself stuck in a squeaking spiral anyway, just lay off on the pharyngeal voice a couple of days and work on chestier singing for a bit. And with that, we've reached the end of this video. If you have any questions, whether about pharyngeal voice or about anything else, be sure to leave a comment below. Stay tuned, remember to like and subscribe for more content, and as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>